Hello, everybody. Ivan Carlson, Free PSC here. And I'm so, so happy to welcome a dear friend, Gwyn Morgan from the UK. I'm going to read a little introduction for him. <laughs> Gwyn Morgan is a sought after coach and consultant for business and private individuals from every continent of the world. His ability to quickly identify true needs and create innovative transform transformational changes that last has led him to track record of delivering a standing return on investment from his work in corporations. His work strips away invisible blockages between people and their brilliance in all aspects of the professional and personal lives. In mentoring coaches and leaders, he has enabled them to bring out the best in their own colleagues and clients. Creating come? a legacy of change that lasts results. Even thousand. Awesome. Since discovering the three principles 12 years ago, Wynn's work and, and his own life has been transformed. And I feel lucky to have been born, and that wasn't always the case, he says. So before we continue, please mute yourself. And even better, show your camera, show your face in the camera. So we can see you, please. You don't, don't have to, but it uh, it's always nicer to see. And uh, going back to that introduction, Will, I'm curious about the before and after your introduction to the principle. What can you say about your before and after? It's difficult to put into words the difference in the before and after. I was before I was a high functioning, um, insecure, frequently depressed, neurotic, sad, tortured soul. That's what I thought I was. Um, and then I realized that none of that was true. That I would be sad, I would sometimes be depressed, I would sometimes get insecure. I wasn't a tortured soul and everything I felt was didn't have the meaning I put on it beforehand. So one way of saying it, and I've described it like this a few times in the past, which I mean, I remember thinking that if I had the choice of not being born, I would have said, yeah, I don't want to be born for most of my life until I'd say 2012. And that that's when it started to shift. And now I feel very lucky, incredibly lucky to have been born into this form, or into any form, and then to actually feel lucky to have born into this form. I mean, that's a heck of a transformation. I think I was lucky when I'd have previously thought that it was a curse to have been born as me. And nothing about me's changed. That's what's interesting. I've not grown more IQ points. I've not grown six inches taller. I've not got you know different color eyes or anything else about me is nothing none of that has changed but everything about me looks totally different and everything about everyone else looks totally different now too so i feel very fortunate yes and that's uh behind for me for for asking that question because i i learned that everyone who is telling their story about the before and after you can summarize it to nothing has changed and everything is different and then it makes me think of the, my next question what is different Well, it would be easy to say, and a part of this is true, be easy to say that what I think is different. But what's deeper than what I think is different is 
what I think about what I think is what's different. So, um, so let's say I have a thought about myself that says Win is a fool, but not the kind of fool where I find myself funny, the fool where I am, you know, a loser. So I have the thought that I am a loser. I can have that thought now and I could have that thought 12 years ago. But what I think about having that thought is totally different. Because now I find it funny that I can think that. Well, before it absolutely looked true. So now I've just seen a gap between what I think and to what extent what I think has got any meaning or relevance or truth in it. And here's something that I I do forget this, okay, but it's always still true in my in my mind. Any thought I have about myself that is that makes me feel uh, low about myself can't have any reality in it. None. Nothing personal about all the thoughts that I have about me that are personal. None of them can be true which is a, a an, an enormous thing to realize because i'd be the same as you here right now you personally sitting where you are and the same as eight billion other people right now nothing different and not that much different between me and you know the, the pen on my desk other than the fact that i'm animated and i have consciousness I, you know what we call alive so i'm you know i have the energy and the spirit of life within me and i'm conscious but still at a very small level you know as a i guess at a subatomic particle level i'm no different from this and yet i i would think that sometimes i'd be more useless than this well, it's probably not true, right? <laughs> it can't be true. But what can be true is, here I am, this random group of particles that's animated by the energy in all things, with the ability to recognize it's alive and to recognize it has the energy of all things in this very temporary form of a human body. So that makes, as soon as I started looking at that with, with a bigger perspective, as opposed to taking that personally, it opened up me having a totally different relationship with what I think. That's one way of saying what really is different in the before and after. Yes. And, and <clears throat> flipping that, spinning that thought some, some turns more, uh, to me, I, I'm all with you. And it has, for me, made life much simpler in the way I'm not catching up in my erroneous thoughts so long. It, it, I quickly can see where I'm headed. And that is making life simple, if I can say so. And it makes me realize that we are all the same. If it's valid for me, then it's valid for everyone else. Um, and looking at the world today, what's going on, I've been watching PGC, they have made some videos on called peace talks. Uh, have you ever uh, have you had any thoughts about peace? Well, I'm I'm recording one tomorrow. Wow. Um, well, I do have thoughts about that. It was only a few weeks ago I, I had the start of a, of a blog in my head, which was, we have to do better. 
And the reason I'm not taking it any further is because it's not we, it's me. It has to start with me. I cannot expect other people to be, to see what's going on unless I go there mm. first. And there's more for me to see there, a lot more for me to see there. So one way of answering, um, I think anyway, what's coming to mind about the whole peace thing is, which, which echoes in fact what you just said, Ivan, about the um, simplicity. When I remember that the only, uh, the only thing that can take me out of being at peace within me is believing what I think, not just having a thought or having a low state of mind or a mood or being angry, that is fine. It's if I buy into the idea that that came from out there, that came to me, then um, it's possible that I will not be at peace within me. Mm. And not only that, it will be possible that my lack of inner peace will look like a problem caused by the outside world and I will go to the outside world in order to make me feel better on the inside, which of course is buying into the myth of outside in versus inside out and then what happens is you know if you like two kids playing in the playground and one pinches the person next to them and the other one pinches them back a little harder and before you know it there's a slap and then there's a punch well that's what we humans do in various different ways not just in the playground uh, getting angry at each other at work or having rows at home. But neighbor against neighbor, country against country, philosophy against philosophy, religion against religion. To me, it's the same that it looks like the answer to me feeling better comes from doing something out there, not knowing that in here is the source of every feeling I've ever had. I never will have. And you're so right. It starts with me. Always. I'm... I'm, I'm. I'm feeling the feelings right now. So, do you have any topic you are keen on talking about tonight? Well, I'm always in, in our email exchange, I think since Friday, when we were swapping messages about what to talk about tonight. I'd be really keen to hear from everyone here. Yeah. What, Why not? what would be really good for, for you? And if there's specific questions, something you'd like to see dif differently, deeper, or just something that's niggling you, then I'd love to hear it and then we could explore. Yes, please. You know how to raise your hand, everybody, I think. So uh, please raise your hand and you can ask, put the question up for win. The floor is open. And don't worry about the language. If we wouldn't need to have it translated into English for me, then uh, we can figure that out. So don't let that be the thing that stops you, please. If you don't want to talk, you can put it in the, in the chat. There we have one, Hi. Kenny. Welcome. Hello, Ian. Hi. Hi. Good to talk with you. Yeah, same, same. Well, I, I was actually translating uh, Sydney Banks 
videos uh, last uh, yesterday. And it was something that I saw a little bit clearer and it would be really good to explore that one more. And it's that wisdom is a given thing. It really is. And it is, it is in the formless. So it's before thought. And I had the feeling when when you know when you have the feeling when you're in, in the insight a little bit when you're in exploring it, but I I'm not the for the moment. <laughs> but I, I, I know that direction. So I mean and I need to sit on it a little bit more. But it, it it's because I can see sometimes you get an insight and then after a couple of years you get an even bigger insight. And I saw this in this one. So I saw something deeper and it's not there yet, but it's for me when I when I first saw this, I really knew that that it's something that's deeper, deeper than thought. That it's the like the intelligence of life. You have the energy, the conscious energy. And and when I heard Sid Sam say something, it was really that that it is it is like you land into wisdom. You are there. And so I don't know what to say more about that, but that, I love that topic because that is that is one of my greatest insights. It is I, I mean, I'm okay. It doesn't matter if like you said before, you know it. It's a knowing. It, it really is a knowing. And when you have that one, it's doesn't matter if what thoughts I have. Before it did. Before it did, it, it was big time. Because when I was in different thinking, I also had shame about my thinking. It was shameful. And and and, and you know, when you when you're trying to fix your thoughts, when you're trying to fix yourself, and and now it's just I'm not there anymore. But then, then to see that more deeper, that it's true all the time, to see it even more. And I, I guess that's that's what Sid meant about infinite level of consciousness. You can see it more deeper and deeper and deeper. So you can be more and more and more in it. And um, yeah. So let's yeah, I would like to explore that one. So just so I understand, that was a, you know, a lovely share, Kenny, thanks. What is it specifically about wisdom that you'd like to explore? It is like it's it's a really it, it is like I said it, it's a knowing it, it, it is there you know you know and and you there is no questions there are no argument there's nothing it's just a knowing you just know that for me that's wisdom it, it is. But to trust that one. To really trust that, and I think, yeah, that, I think that's that's the thing, just to trust it. Because I, I to be honest, I, I don't always do that because I use my thinking a lot sometimes, and sometimes I just I'm not there. I don't know what to do because I don't. If it's not mature enough, I don't know or, or whatever. I mean, when you are in a situation when you don't know what to do or where to go, and just to trust that that wisdom will show up when you need it and maybe it's not just the time but just to trust that one too i think that one that's the one yeah so two things come to mind if you're okay that i share i think trusting something is really nice 
I also don't think it's needed. Because if something is true, it doesn't matter if I trust it. It doesn't care if I trust it. It'll still carry on, even if I'm in my doubts. Say, so, ah, yeah, okay, wisdom doesn't show up. It still will if it's true, so I don't care so much what I think or whether I need to do any trusting, because, well, again, it depends on what our definition of the word trust is, right? If it's an active or just a knowing. The other thing that that occurs to me in this as well is that I've often thought that wisdom should always show up. You know, it'll show up whether I have tea or coffee for my drink, for my hot drink while we meet. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter if I have tea or coffee or a cold drink. I think there's an awful lot less at stake in our minute by minute decisions. And if there is something at stake, wisdom will show up. And if there's nothing at stake, wisdom's probably got something else to do. Other than, other than kind of like, get me out of this, well, uh, tea or coffee, and if it's tea, well, which tea? I've got about six different types of tea, right? Well, yeah, that's just, come on, Win. this doesn't matter. But to me, the reason I think, and, and for my understanding, this has been helpful for me to realize is that it's not about living life right. and making the right decisions over what hot drink to get or cold drink to get. I think it's more about enjoying the fact of being alive. This is just me talking and I could be totally wrong and it's my opinion right now on the 5th of November, 2023 at 8.24 your time. It doesn't mean I'm right. But to me, that's what wisdom has shown me or an insight towards wisdom has shown me that there's an intelligence that is always available. And I don't have to worry. And I'm pretty sure wisdom will not micromanage my life. I can just live. And it, in my mind, there is an awful lot more decisions where I think look like a big deal to me, but are really as, as I don't know, immaterial, as unimportant as is it to your coffee. Most of my decisions are that. Very few are, you know, the big ones that better get this one right. Anyway, that's my opinion. Any, what are you? What are you thinking? Oh, I love that. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, I love that. Don't take it so serious. It doesn't matter. Everything changes. Nothing stays the same, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, we get the experience of being alive. Mm -hmm. That's the easy one to miss, regardless of which path we go on or, or whatever we do, we get the experience of being alive. Mm. And, and if you have, yeah, and I mean, if you come from that feeling and if you come from that you're enjoying life, as you say, it doesn't matter what you do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Kenny. That was nice. Who's up next?
<clears throat> well, if nobody else wants to talk, I can continue. Uh, uh, one of my big. I, may I? Uh, yes, Tia. Uh, welcome. I was, I, I was about to say something about this is the longest I've had a call with Sia and he's not said anything. And then thankfully, <laughs> we get to say hello. Hello, Sia. Good to see you, my friend. How are you? You okay? I'm really well, <laughs> thanks. You? You're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. That's yes, great. Loving you. You're good. That's probably treating me very well. Good. I'm happy. Happy for you. Yes, yes. First of all, it's great to see you. Thank you for the intro and everything else. But just something that came to me because um, uh, as you were speaking, well, it was, of course, when it comes to smaller matters of life, really, tea or coffee or with um, milk or black or whatever, uh, those will make really biggest type of difference uh, in, in how we, the quality of life that we're living. Uh, at the same time, I just wanted to add from my own experience that even the biggest questions of life, they have exactly the same effect and flavor for me. And so just, I know you are aware of this, but I just did like just to share my own little angle with this, that, um, for example, just one day I just thought, I'm, I'm moving to Sweden. That was exactly the same day that, like one day exactly similar when I had my second son in my arms for the first time when he was born, I just looked into his eyes and I knew that he will grow up in Sweden. And that was it, without having any thoughts, plans, or anything at all. It was just like that wisdom that you're talking about, because when I looked into his eyes, I just saw angels. And I know in that environment, angels would either be burned or their wings would be clipped off, you know? So I thought, well, the least I can do is to let these guys fly free, be free, you know, make, make it great life for themselves, whatever they like. But that was the least that I can do. And um, five months later, yeah, we were in Sweden, going across Europe. Back then we had East, uh, like Berlin and West Berlin and everything else. And going across Europe with different countries, four or five countries without any papers, without any documentation. Going, going through the wall, the Berlin wall, things that. <laughs> Without anything, I mean, now I think like, it was that me? What? Can't be. Uh, even James Bond couldn't do it back then, you know. So, <laughs> now what I'm trying to say is that, um, um, as as you rightly said, it's, well, it's not a matter of trusting no one be something because when you think about trusting, to me, it comes with like believing in something. Uh, it gives you a bit of that kind of sense, and to me. Again, that is um, trying to follow something that you really don't have proof proof for. And you just follow it because it feels good, it feels right and everything. But as you already said, but this is when you look at the principles, then it's okay if it's principles. So it's always valid everywhere, every time, for every, uh, in any occasion. Otherwise, it's not a principle. And I have, I promise you, you know that anyways, I've, pr I've tested this thing in so many <laughs> impossible situations and always, always delivered just, I don't know, how to, I can't put a name, name on it, but if I have made five great decisions in my life, all five, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was that inner wisdom, inner knowing, guiding the way, getting me back to the source of all living. That gives you that extra power to become a superman uh, without knowing it. And we all have that superpower, but it's just to discover it, you know. And uh, so, but if I made a thousand bad decisions, guilty. That was me. <laughs> that was me, definitely. <laughs> yeah, just, just wanted to like uh, share this bit with you. Uh, great to see you, and yeah, thank you for, for being here. Thank you, Sia. Lovely to see you, too. Um, 
you know to that to that point as well there's some there's a a memory that just um popped up as i was listening to see it just now sometimes things show up the nudges in life show up in really interesting ways sometimes they can show up as well, a, a knowing and sometimes it can be really weird ways right so here's an example of how you know people say god works in mysterious ways and we could substitute the word god for anything that makes sense okay whatever makes most sense to you wisdom works in mysterious ways given this conversation right now would be an appropriate way of of using a of, of using a slightly different word i stayed in this conversation that we call the three principles because of feeling insecure so i'd finished my first round of um, principles based training back in 2012 a michael neal super coach this is true story right and i was really happy that i was getting my certificate of um, my coaching certificate i'm now a certified transformational coach transformative coach and i was really happy and then this other group of 11 people went up that did the same program the previous year and came back to do it again and they were then presented with a different certificate and these certificates were bigger than the one that i just had and i thought i want a bigger certificate right total insecurity right playing i want a bigger certificate how do i come back and do it again next year i kid you not right that's how wisdom showed up for me for me to stay in this conversation you know, 10 years ago well just coming up to 12 years ago probably now but it's just like a fascinating way that that things show up and to me where i get stuck is thinking that i should know ahead how things will play out and, what, and how things will unfold in the future when i never did in the past but we can well i know i'll speak for myself i know i can then look at the past and then do a copy paste okay well this is me post rationalizing what happened in 2012 and therefore that's what i need to do in 23 uh, 2023 well that's just not right because wisdom and the intelligence in in me and in you which comes from the formless and then comes into form in the way we are and become we become aware of it or into the form where we're not even aware of it it's not conscious but it still guides us then it's always real time it responds to now not yesterday and i love knowing that i love knowing its freshness that it's always going to respond to what's now and not me in my cognitive mind trying to to copy what worked once in the past and to okay there's a there's now this is how to live the rest of my life and the other thing i wanted to say as well um, and this is specifically um, how things can sometimes work. And Sia, you reminded me of it. And it's you specifically that reminded me of this. The conversation that I had with you, Sia, now three years ago, just as a catch up over to your coffee. It might have been two years ago. I don't really know. It was three years ago. Um, something that we talked about on that call, without using your name, I used with a client last week, and it really was really helpful. And I'd not thought of it for about two years. When you could say that's wisdom too. How a little memory will just like pop up in real time. That's going to be really helpful. But somebody I'd met for the very first time who was struggling with lots of things in his own life. And something that you said just reminded me of. Of how well we're made. That was very helpful for him. And I think the reason I'm mentioning that is for all of us to, to know that we have no idea how the little things that we say and do and the little bits of love that we show here and there that are big, how they can play out 
in not only our lives, but other people's lives and often people we've never met in their lives too. Which I think is incredibly helpful and hopeful. That's the word I'm looking for. But we're incredibly hopeful for, for humanity in this planet. Well, next one. Thomas. Hello. Hey. I wonder if you could speak a little bit more to hanging out in the unknown. Like Yeah. But from my own perspective, why why this comes to mind? So this is not about me, but, but it's about just to give you some context to my question. So I decided to offer a deep dive with the client to go to Albev in Spain, where I am at right now. And he kept on asking me, we decided it was game, game on like four months ago. And he kept on, kept on asking me, what is it all about? What are we going to do? How is it going to be? Who, what's going to play out? And, what to, and I said, I really don't know because I de deliberately didn't want to know because I didn't want to have a lot of thinking about it. Uh, in my life, my thinking always gets in the way. So, and we get here and uh, it's like standing on the shoulder of giants and everything seems to play out exactly as it's supposed to be. And I don't know. Uh, it's joyful, easy. Talk about loving relationships. Uh, love and understanding. Love as a word for truth. Um, coming from that place, not knowing. And I heard somewhere, somehow, that truth always comes with a beautiful feeling. But that's not my experience. So I want to <laughs> sort of First time I met you was at Super Coach 2017, and I didn't like you at all. You were too honest. You were too honest. I thought I had the game going for me, and you were like seeing right through me. So that part of Thomas, like, was hiding and sort of thought I understood something which is more than I think nowadays, most of the time, was so... And then when, and at the same time, truth was so... I felt so relieved at the same time. So, tell me more about that hanging out in, that seeing the same, feeling so free at the same time as something has been taken away from you. And the more you look into it, the more you realize you didn't never have any use for it. Yeah. Anyway. That's a lot. Well, I, I've had similar feelings towards people who have eventually become huge for me. 
So, the, you know, the mentors that I've spent most of my time with and most of my money with over the last 12 years, when I first met them, I thought, well, I thought he was an idiot. I thought he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is just nonsense, right? And I don't know, something inside me heard something. And then the other part of me, the ego part of me, didn't. It was just fighting itself. Or it, it was fighting for its own existence, I think. So there's a, I think there's one of those memes about truth. Um, truth will set you free, but sometimes it will, it will also kind of like really, I can't remember what the word is. You'll also hate it for a while. I think that's a polite way of saying what I've seen the meme to be. Um, sometimes it'll kick you in the ass, but then eventually it'll set you free or something like that. Um, so I'm with you, but eventually that beautiful feeling of truth does come. Back to your point on not knowing. I think that notion of not knowing comes back to the freshness and the responsiveness of real-time wisdom, real-time intelligence. Because I, I always would like to think that what I know today could easily be out of date in the next moment. I might see something deeper, different more true so i don't want to have the stale taste of yesterday's best ideas and that's just personally for me as well but the other thing to know about yeah not knowing is not only does it so let's say okay let's think of the next meeting i think i need to be on on point for or think i'm going to be on point for yeah wednesday wednesday i think okay you know i've got you know some some big client sessions coming up on wednesday right and big in inverted commas because i've made that up as total judgment call on me and i could think well i you know i need to get my stuff together for that but what i do know is my stuff together on that Okay, there's a bit of prep for me to do. Just know who's going to be there. Um, make sure they've all got the Zoom link. But my mental, emotional preparation is zero. Because all it will take for me is to show up, going back to um, what Ivan said to, to begin tonight was, yeah, show up and respond to what shows up. It's very wise because there's freshness in, no, I wanna say it differently. That is the best of me is showing up right now, not listening to what yesterday's good idea was and regurgitating as something that seemed like a good idea even a few hours ago, when in fact, I don't know what's going to be fresh. And I put a heap of weight on knowing was the best of me. I, the, my thirst for knowledge was huge. And of course, in school work, I mean, it's a very important thing to be able to, well, it, it's, a, it's an attribute that helps people pass exams, right? Knowing things and remembering things. For being happy, no. Nope. For being really good at things, no, nope. an awful lot less. A lot, lot less. A lot less than we often think. And I think it took a bit of a leap of faith for me to continually go to the unknown, go into unknown, go into not knowing, give up everything time and time again with a client in a meeting in order for me to see the absolute truth of it and let me just respond to the beautifulness of sort of in my mind at the time it looked like a not so friendly person but i saw you were 
treated as a friend and honored by your friends around you. So I, I, I wondered about that. And the more I saw the truth of what you had said, you disrupted my whole world. And you don't even remember what you said. But that that truth became stronger and stronger and stronger. And eventually, I'm so ever grateful for you to stand up and be honest and true. And I think we all owe ourselves that. And whatever, that's what matters. And it, that's not changing. Like your truth is always going to be your truth. Of course, things around it change, but things you know that you know sets you free to be able to trust the unknown or not even have to, having to trust it. It's like, be curious about it more. There's so much juice in it. Yeah, cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, the other thing that that opens up in what you just shared, Thomas, is being willing to disrupt. Even if the other person finds it uncomfortable, if we disrupt with a good feeling and not disrupt for just for disrupting someone, you know, just for that, for that sake, if we disrupt with love and with a good feeling in their best interests, then that's the best we often can do. That's very loving to disrupt someone in that way. Even if they don't like it for a bit. Thank you, Thomas. That was lovely. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> it's almost seven years ago when we first talked. Now it's official. Yes, we, ha we have one more hand. Are you finished, Thomas? Or you want to say no more? Thank you, Thomas, for sharing that. And Rickard, it's up to you now. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to share with you my my way of, of looking at the principles and um, the things we have been discussing tonight. Uh, I see it like the distance to the thought, as you said in the beginning, when uh, is is the for me the difference now and before. The small distance between I th I say my wisdom and the thinking is the thing that makes the difference for me. I can see um, that thought isn't so important important now like before. And the wisdom or the knowing or deep deeper understanding, I look at the distance as becoming wider between the wisdom and the thought. The thought become smaller, not so important as before. And I forget, I, I had a lot, lot to, to speak about, but uh, it is diminishing in my head. But um, one other thing that I think is, is important is we say we get a deeper understanding. I have some trouble um to to understand a deeper understanding you have to value the understanding you have in the beginning and the understanding you have maybe in three or four years and to evaluate you must think so i see something i would say we always has wisdom as the, the beginning, and then we have the thinking. And when we broaden the gap between wisdom and thinking, it's not the wisdom that turns up, it's the 
the um, importance of thinking that diminishing, diminish. That's my way of looking at it. So we are always, we are always wisdom. We have the life power, and then, then, then when we start thinking, we trans, we transform to the the personal life, or uh, I don't know what to, to call it. But you, you, the more we broaden the gap between wisdom and thinking, then we it becomes more. Uh, conscious about how how we works. I don't know if you understand. I have to yeah, on myself. I think so. Because to me, those are the words that could be used to describe seeing something deeper. The bigger the gap, the yeah. deeper I see it. Yeah. In my, I I see it more clearly now, but I don't have. The, the the feeling of the good feeling is more is not uh, it's not a feeling because I, I think a feeling comes from thinking. It's more a release from thinking. Yeah. It does it doesn't mean so much. It it isn't uh, as uh, important as before. Yeah. It doesn't matter what happens. Because it isn't true anyway, in the way that it was before, when I was thinking more. Something like that. Thank so you. Was there, was there a question in there? No. No. Because to uh, me, that was yeah, Maybe, a maybe if uh, I want, want, wanted to share my way of how I look. The, the, yeah. of the part of that we said that wisdom pops up. I mean that wisdom well, is... Here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. We can get very caught up in the words and how we want to say it and how it needs to look. And to me, that's not what matters. And whenever I get caught up in it, you know, the best way I could describe this, the best way I could just, just explain something, it's already out of date. What mattered was, to me anyway, the f that I had an insight that helped me see it. And the fact that I could have another insight that would help me see it deeper. And the fact that I am um, built for more and more insight. And I can just enjoy knowing that. Enjoy the feeling of not needing to figure everything out right in the way that I used to think that that was the only way to live. Now, I don't know if that's at all helpful or at all in line with what, what you were thinking, but well, I'm intrigued, I'm curious. Thank you very much. You know, to, to me it was often and I still do fall into this, thinking that there's a right way and a wrong way, and being in my head is wrong, and intellectualizing things is wrong, and, and thinking is wrong and bad, and that's just not true. It's going to happen inside this human being, because that's how a human being works. I'm going to fall for the trick of thought. Not constantly, but not far off constantly. And that's what it is to be human. One thing. And that's also what can be make life so enjoyable that I can, you know, when I when I left South Wales earlier this um, late morning today, when I went to see my family, I went to see my parents, and you know, and my mother's dog. 
knew that I was leaving and you know he gets a little bit upset but but okay and you know and he'll you know he'll get very clingy of me and it's nice to remember that and it's nice to remember the hug that I got from my mother it's nice to have seen you know my brother and his grandchildren on on Friday and and everything it's it's all in the wonderful realm of what it is to be a human being nothing to resist nothing to fight even my state of mind even an emotion that i don't particularly find enjoyable is telling me something inherently useful and wise and it's just nice to understand it as opposed to try and escape from it Sorry, Ricard, you were going to say something then as I was still talking. I, I, I almost forgot it, but I, I, what I meant was just the things you say that, uh, that you can live your life aware of your thinking and the distance with wisdom helps you. Um, yeah, you have, you, you've, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not cool. That's the, that's the difference that I have yes. experienced. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There was um uh, this this is a, a memory that I just had as well, and and just listening to what you just said, Ricard, which is um a client I was with. We had a two and a half day immersion online on Zoom at the end of January. And he runs a, a very successful company in Central Europe. Um, and at the end of the, the second day, he said something that I thought, well, geez, if he remembers that, the guy's done. It's awesome, right? Because effectively what he said was, worry is the loss of perspective. Or another way of saying it would be, Worry happens when I don't see the gap between what I'm thinking and what's true. And for him to say that, I'm glad I was sitting down, right? Because this guy was so kind of like caught up in business, in meaning, in being a son to his aging parents, in, in being a partner to his wife, an owner to his dog, having two cars. It was just like so tight. And then for him to just see the notion that that little space or what that does is, whether it's deeper or higher, just words for the same thing that we just get a different view on what's going on when less in it, and we just see it for what it is a bit. And then to say something like worry is the loss of perspective. And whenever we see something for how it is, which is always our thinking, and stuff or just thinking, about thinking, all of a sudden, we remember and we're whole. Thank you, Ricardo. It was lovely to talk with you tonight. Thank you. So who's next? And it can include, if you want a, you know, a quick bit of coaching that can include that too, or it could be something like, "Win, what the hell are you talking about? It can be that, or it can be anything that you want. Come on, friends. Well then, <clears throat> can we talk about insecurity? Yeah. We absolutely can. And how insecurity is uh, in my world the root cause to almost any uncomfortable feeling there is on this planet. It can create fear, anxiety, depression in my mind. 
some words for me. I, I think that too. I think insecurity is behind the vast majority of what a human being, and I'm going to use the in inverted commas, okay, so just bear with me on this. When we go off course and get things wrong, I think it's insecurity is what's really going on a lot of the time, more than anything else. So if someone is being arrogant and full of themselves, I, I often think that that's hiding a deep insecurity that doesn't look like insecurity, but underneath it all, it, it might well be. Now, I used to think insecurity was bad. And I'm uh, it, and it visits me frequently. Okay, it's one of those kind of feelings that I'm very familiar with. And it's only recently, and I mean weeks, that while I've heard that every feeling is kind, every feeling has got good intentions, every feeling is telling you something meaningful. Um, but sometimes very hidden. It was only a few weeks ago when I was writing, writing my blog for October, that it was about self-consciousness, which is not dissimilar to insecurity. Me being self-conscious, thinking about me and insecurity is pretty much the same thing. Well, I didn't know that in the hour and a half it took me to write this article, this blog, that the title would end up being being friends with self-consciousness. Or another way of saying it would be using the word that even you brought up, being friends with insecurity. But here's the but, and there is a but in this one. When we understand what it means, it's absolutely a friend. When I understand that all the feeling that I'm very familiar with in insecurity is telling me one thing, I've got me on my mind. And it looks like what I think about me is true. A, it's not true. And B, no one does anything well when they've got themselves on their mind. So I'm instantly free of those two things. And this is just not true. The bigger the insecurity, the bigger the lie about me there is. And it's a really cool signal to know if I was feeling insecure right now with you all, well, that's one important signal. It's saying that my eyes are looking at me when I'm the least important person on this call, the people who matter are you. The person that matters is you right now listening to this. I don't matter. So it's a signal for me to get present again to what matters. Now, I had no idea, and I read it, I think it was Mavis Kahn's book that reminded me, and when I first heard Mavis talk, I don't know how many years ago, now five or six years ago, I thought, wow, that's really cool, nice idea. I don't know what she means. I like the idea, but I didn't see it as truth. Well, now it kind of makes all the sense in the world to me. Insecurity is a really good friend telling me I'm thinking of me, and I don't tend to do as well there, so eyes that way again. The feeling goes, of insecurity and are back present to what really matters. And creativity comes back. Pardon? And creativity comes back. Far more far more likely to, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Bill Petit who says that uh, all those feelings, bad feelings, uncomfortable feelings are love letters from the universe. That's what he says, that love letters, yeah. And when I first heard him say that, it was at a conference and I went, nice, Bill, but really? Well, he was right about that too. <laughs> 
Evet. Was there more on insecurity, even that you wanted to talk about? No, just insecurity in in general. But and uh, well, more on insecurity. Oof. Uh, that's uh, really a big one today in, in in society. I think. What do you mean when you say moral insecurity? Well, <clears throat> when you go against your true self. You do it from insecurity. And then you try to please the audience, not yourself, to gain something. That's to me, it's more insecurity. You abandon what your true, your true self. And then, what is your true self? That's what came up in my mind. Yeah, exactly. Where do you go with that question? Well, I, 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 I had an experience some 10 years ago, shaving my hair off because I thought it was would be it looked nice. And then when I came out <clears throat> to the audience, nobody said anything. It was like I was invisible. And it, what? Am I invisible? Don't they see me? Who am I? What am I? <laughs> Insecurity in in cubic how much and it made me think think and think again and if i'm not my hairstyle then i'm not any of the labels i've given myself my world has given me none of those are valid so what am I? And then it came. I'm like a wave, a part of the ocean. I'm energy, part of the whole energy. And that energy for me is love. If we take away our thoughts, contents of our thoughts, as much as we can, we just ignore them, ignore, ignore. The only thing left is love. And leaving that, my true self, love, is more of insecurity. Abandon that. You know, where I went with that question, true self, was if there's a true self, then it's not one self. It's not this. It's a collective true selves. And it's a, one way of describing what you said about I'm a wave in the ocean, but not separate to it. It's one part of everything, but everything. There's no separate self. I kind of sometimes struggle with that. So sometimes I don't know if that's true, but kind of makes an awful lot of sense in one area that it is true. And then 
and then at another point as well yeah okay but here i am with just a bunch of preferences a lot of thought you know that i prefer salted caramel ice cream than chocolate ice cream but that's again no different from hair or my genetic makeup my hereditary background all of that stuff none of that is the true self and then i i do kind of come back to that whole notion of exactly to what you said the potential that the only self that really exists is love impersonal universal unconditional unconditional it's the only love that really does exist is unconditional i think it's a nice thing to wonder into in my mind it's just one of those things i just like to have a little daydream about and I do it quite frequently I mean I, I love even though I've lived in this in this house I've lived in this house almost 20 years now and the reason one reason I moved into this it had a downstairs office as well as you know our bedrooms upstairs and the living room diamond room kitchen it had a downstairs office separate so it's great setup but of course you know I'm going back to 2004 way before COVID-19 was a thing, right? But of course, it's been incredibly helpful. More than it ever has been in the last three and a half years. And it has a garden. And I've never appreciated the garden in the way that I have in the last two years. In just sitting out there with my morning coffee, my form of meditating, sitting out in the garden, watching the birds come to the bird feeder, watching them fly, listening to their songs, and just being and in that feeling of sometimes in my kind of like worrying about what i will do at 9 15 when i've got my net my first call maybe at 9 30 and oh i haven't gone to my shower yet i will look terrible on zoom all that kind of stuff might come in and and yet i could have that experience of being again where i could just be in a little daydream of what this is all about this existence this consciousness this physical form and this spirit this aliveness i enjoy wandering into there i moved to this house where i'm living now five months ago from an apartment on the with no balcony, no garden, nothing, just the apartment. And here I have <clears throat> three wonderful friends sharing a house and just about three thousand square meters of garden. Which I can go out in the morning have my breakfast. In the middle of the day having my lunch at the evening watching the sunset eating my supper watching peasants our cats the trees one of my major insights when, when, when i learned the principles was how beautiful nature is and it's, it's making my hair stand when I think about it. Trees. It, it, not one tree is the same as the other. And they are all beautiful. And feeling that thought makes every human I meet beautiful. Well, one of my first big insights was the beauty of human beings, nature, life. And it's still with me.
what else is on anyone's mind tonight, if anything? It could include something that you've seen for yourself either in the last hour or in the last week or the last month or anything. It'd be nice to, uh, nice to hear from you if we haven't heard from you yet. Hello. Hi, Susan. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, this just came to my mind when you were talking today. I don't know why, but uh, in 2013 and 2014, I was uh, utbrand. What do you call it? <laughs> Burned out. Burnout, yes. And I remember before the first time, 2013, I was on the street and I had a lot on my mind always for several years. And I remember I could feel, have this feeling of me being inside of me and looking out of my eyes like the soul was looking out of my lenses, but I didn't know what that was. So I was so fucking terrified. I thought I was going to be be crazy. Uh, and then I was burned out to, twice. I had to do it twice. So I did it well. <laughs> and uh, that was the best thing that ever happened to me in 2000. 17, I went to a retreat with Thomas and Dennis in Sweden. And I remember I got this feeling when I got a huge, huge insight. I was coming down to Thomas and Dennis on a retreat and I felt so strange. And I was talking to a friend on this retreat called Snina and I just said to her, I feel so funny. And she just looked to me and said, alien. I said, yes, I feel like a fucking alien. I, it was exactly the same thing. But now I could feel like I could see the whole world with different eyes. But, but it, it really was the same thing. I, that I was looking out, I could feel the soul before I was burned out. I just went thinking about this. My thought has turned down because I, my physical body couldn't manage it anymore. So the only thing was I just saw life going around myself and then this wonderful experience came around when I um, found out how we work, how we all work. And that can make me so angry. There are so many kids that are in a bad situation and no one tells them. Mm. Often they always get a, a pill or something to wipe this thing away. So that just came to my mind that it was the same thing, but with huge different. Yeah. Well, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I remember the relief of realizing that my craziest thoughts were the same as everyone else's. And maybe the content of the thought was slightly different, but the fact that I would imagine all this other shit like I'm an alien and I'm the only one. And then I realized, well, wait a minute. Everyone I speak to thinks they're the only one. That's what makes us the same. It's just like, what? <laughs> It's a heck of a thing to realize.
We are coming up on 90 minutes soon. So please, is there is anyone else who wants to ask when something, share something? Please, please, please come up. Well, it's been a really, 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 really nice conversation with you. Yeah, been lovely. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Really special to hang out with you, whether you've shared anything verbally or been here. It's yeah. been lovely. Thank you. If anyone wants to connect with you, how can they reach out? I'm very easy to find. Um, there aren't many Win Morgans with any presence online. There's two, right? There's me and another guy. And the other guy is um, an economics professor. He's the head of economics in a, in a university here in the UK. One of the advantages of coming from a small country of Wales is that there's only three, just over three million of us. And if you've got a Welsh name, then there's probably like half of that will have a Welsh name, right? Win Morgan. Um, so if you look for Win Morgan online and you see the economics professor, that's not me. I'm the other one. And in every photograph that you might see of the non-university economics professor called Win Morgan, I will look younger, slimmer, and will not have a beard. It still is me if it says Win Morgan coach. But you know, COVID was kind to some people and less kind to others or maybe i was unkind to myself <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows and really who cares i don't <laughs> <laughs> i'm embracing having a white beard in bits and a bit black mm. here and there yeah just wait <laughs> oh i know <laughs> thank yeah, you so it's lovely to hear from me if you want to have a chat about anything at any time yeah, yeah. so Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, yourself, please. So we can say thank you to Wim. Thank you, Wim. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you.